Hank woke up to find his phone showing ten missed calls and the same number of voicemail messages. He didn't recognize the area code. After several run-ins with spam calls from Chinese robo-marketing, he had set his phone to send unknown numbers to voicemail. Normally, Beijing Betty didn't leave messages. His daughters weren't up yet, so he started listening to the messages. That's when he learned that his wife, Randy, wasn't in Jacksonville, Florida to visit her parents and sister for the weekend as she had told him. Instead, she was in the burn unit of a hospital in Boulder, Colorado. Hank was silent for a moment. His phone was giving him news notifications. Normally, that was a nuisance, but wasting time turning off that feature never seemed worth it. Something about fires popped into his head. He realized he'd seen a news headline with the words fire and boulder when his phone screen came to life that morning. He went to his phone's homepage and saw the headline on the news. Terrible wildfire wiped out suburban Boulder neighborhood overnight. Interesting, Hank would be the first to admit that sometimes he wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed, but he could really only think of one reason why his wife, Randy, in their eight year of marriage lied about where she was going to spend the weekend. He purposely slowed his step. There was no point in hurrying. He made coffee. The girls wouldn't be up for at least another hour. He took the coffee to his wife's work corner in the dining room and picked up her laptop. Turns out it was now protected by a password he didn't know, but Randy was absent-minded and lazy, so he looked for the password written on some scrap of paper and found it bottom of a small desk drawer. Accessing it, he found that she hadn't even closed her email browsers. She don't shut down her computer relying on her new password and apparently on her confidence that Hank wouldn't invade her privacy. All the assumptions that existed in this family before this morning no longer apply. Hank thought they did. Things had changed. She'd met her ex-boyfriend from college Josh Turner at his house in Boulder over the weekend when Josh's wife was away. This was the guy who broke Randy's heart by falling in love and marrying another woman. It seems that over the years, he developed remorse for the woman he dumped, or was it just lust? There weren't many details in the emails mostly just confirmations of arrival times. Hank assumed they poured their hearts out to each other over the phone. One interesting fact popped up. Her parents and sister knew and agreed to cover up her affair, it wasn't in emails, but in chat rooms that were also open. They all thought she should have married Josh whose family had money. Hank was just numb, like he was watching a car accident in slow motion and couldn't look away. He took a moment to take a deep breath and calm down a bit, he needed it, or he might punch holes in the drywall walls of the house. He dialed the hospital in Boulder. When the switchboard answered, he asked on a hunch if Josh Turner was a patient. When they asked Hank to define his relationship to Mr. Turner, he said he was a friend. The operator then said she could not provide any information. This response definitely confirmed that they had a patient named Josh Turner. Hank then called the number left in his voicemail. It was a direct line to the hospital's emergency room. After he identified himself, the clerk there told him that Randy had been brought in with third-degree burns over 80% of her body, including lung damage from smoke inhalation. The fire apparently broke out suddenly in the drought-stricken area, spread quickly in high winds and cut off the only escape route. More than 100 homes were burned and destroyed. I'm sorry. Hank said that can't be my wife. She's in Jacksonville, Florida. You must have the wrong information. He hung up. Yes, of course, she was in Boulder. He could sense that, but he wasn't going to make it easy for anyone. He looked at his wife's computer again and found Josh's social media page. Randy had indeed made him one of her friends. There, he found Josh's wife. She had posted a public post from her family home in San Diego, asking for prayer because she had just learned that her husband had been hospitalized with severe burns in Boulder. It's about time those prayers were answered by the God of Vengeance. Hank thought, contacting Josh's wife in a chat room to introduce himself and share what he'd found out. He left his phone number. A while later finishing his coffee, he saw another missed call. He didn't recognize the number, but it was a voicemail from Josh's wife, Tina. 
Hank called her back, Miss Turner, is your name really Tina? He had to ask. Yes. She said with a sigh, when I got married, one might have feared it would be to the woman Josh had rejected. I married for love. Now it's just a complete rift. You must be Randy's husband, I am. I certainly knew about her when Josh and I met. He'd been acting weird lately, but I didn't understand why. It all makes sense now, is it the same for you? Kind of, I knew about Josh, but Randy wasn't acting all fussy, so I didn't notice. You're taking it easy, Hank, how do you do it? You talk calm too. I'm on the pill. Tina said, Josh is badly burned, they've already put him in a medically induced coma. I lost my temper when I heard that, now now I'm just in shock. Especially knowing the truth of what really happened. What's your wife's story, badly burned? I don't know much more than that, I told them couldn't be her because my wife is in Florida. Tina giggled. Oh, the hospital's calling again, let me answer it, and let's keep in touch. She hung up and Hank saved her number and his contacts so the spam blocker wouldn't send the call to voicemail. A new call came in from Randy's father, Bob. Bob must have seen the news and gotten worried. Cell phone rings. Yeah? Hank? Hank? Yeah? There was a pause. Bob had never liked Hank, and Hank disliked Bob in return, but they'd always maintained a semblance of polite conversation. Now, Bob noticed it didn't seem polite at all. Hank, have you heard from Randy? Hank paused. That question must have cost Bob blood, morally speaking. Why would I hear from her, she's upstairs in her old room. Isn't she? Spending time with you, your stroppy wife, and your other asshole daughter, Bob realized that Hank knew. He sighed. Hank. She really loves you. I know we never got along. Bob. Hank intervened his voice getting louder. This is bullshit, and before you go on talking and annoying me even more, I realize you've always disliked me. You were convinced I wasn't worthy of your daughter, but Josh was. Your wife and your other daughter acted like ingratiating bitches to me too. I put up with it to keep the peace, but now it's over. And I wanna be clear, if you were standing in front of me right now, I would punch you in the mouth until you spit out your blood-soaked teeth, you pathetic humans," Hank hung up the phone. There was really nothing more to say, however, to save time, he blocked Bob's phone numbers as well as his mother-in-law's and sister-in-law's. Daddy, why are you yelling? His daughter Nicole asked entering the kitchen. Her younger sister Rebecca followed her, Daddy said a bad word. Rebecca announced. Did he? Nicole asked. Say it again, Daddy. I didn't hear it, Hank had to smile. What was that bad word, Becky? She frowned. I can't remember, you must have heard it wrong. Now let's have breakfast. Today is going to be pancake day, three pancakes each and some orange juice. Then both girls watched cartoons. After all, it was Saturday morning, they liked bubble guppies. Hank hoped they were cartoons. A path to something more substantial like Pinky in the Brain or Phineas and Ferb, the phone rang again. It was Tina Turner. The pills aren't working. The what? The pills I told you I was taking to calm down, well, they're not working. Why do you say that, Miss Tina Turner? At the hospital, I was connected to where Josh is in the ICU. The nurse put me on speakerphone. She thought it might help Josh to hear my voice even though he's in a coma, so I lost my temper. I yelled that his girlfriend was badly burned too and would probably die and that it was his fault and that after you and I both got our life insurance payouts, we'd go on a world cruise and spend the whole time fucking each other to a stupor to pay it off. His heart nearly stopped when he heard me. Even though he's in a coma, yes. It's hard to tell if it was my screaming that caused it or if it was just a coincidence. He pulled through, though. I'm sorry. She paused. Sorry. Why are you sorry? Are you sorry that his heart almost stopped, or are you sorry he's still alive? All of Hank's instincts leaned toward cruelty, but he controlled himself. 
I'm just sorry it happened like that, me too. After a pause, he asked. Tell me about this cruise we're going on. I'm sorry, I don't know where it came from. Still, I'm curious about it. I'll bet you are. She paused, are you really curious, Hank? I've seen on social media that you have a pretty face, but I haven't particularly followed you online. If I had to waste my time getting revenge by sleeping with someone, you'd be a pretty good choice. Why do you ask? Do I have a chance? I don't know. She answered slowly, it's just that I've spent time since I realized he was cheating. Wondering what's wrong with me. Seeing that you're interested makes me feel a little better. You don't look so bad yourself for what it's worth, Hank snorted. Thank you. That's good to hear, even if my wife clearly preferred your husband, maybe we're not the problem. Somehow I think it is too. Tina Turner paused again, did you ever wonder why they did that? I suppose it's because they thought they could have sex on the side and get away with it, it sounds so simple. Well, what else is there to it? Tina said decisively. Listen. We both have a lot to digest, but let's keep in touch, we're the only two people who understand how the other is feeling right now. Okay. Okay, I need to get some Amazon shorts, Bermudas for the cruise and swim trunks. She giggled, at least you're making me feel better. Maybe the pills worked. Get a cabin with a balcony. She giggled again, bye. They hung up the phone. Hank saw that he had another voice message. It was the hospital again, he called back and connected to the nurse in Randy's room. She too was on speaker phone, it must be a different nurse than the one caring for Josh, but they all seem to be operating under the same set of industry medical guidelines. Mr. Henry Becker? Uh, yes. I'm Nurse Yang. We're on speaker phone now, I'm in the burn unit of the hospitals I see you. Your wife is here, she's badly burned and in a medically induced coma. She's right next to me, we're hoping the sound of your voice might help, even though she's unconscious. Hank thought about the fact that after today, the hospital would have to update its standard procedures for dealing with a patient's family but he had to ask. What makes you think that? I wasn't there when she was brought in. One of my girlfriends was there. She said your wife had a dead grip on her hand and wouldn't let go until they realized she was demanding, call your husband. So sorry. Your wife fought the team with all the strength she had and wouldn't let them do anything until they assured her they would deliver the message, okay. Too little and too late, Hank thought. What am I supposed to say, tell her whatever is in your heart? The nurse said naively, okay. Thought Hank. Game on listen you pathetic liar. He yelled at his wife on the phone. I hope you die in agony and spend eternity in hell with who will also die, just so you know, I'm going to spend all the life insurance money I get to seduce Josh's wife, and I will never forgive you, the line cut off. The nurse must not have listened when he started, but she seemed to come to her senses. Hank realized that he wasn't going to reach his mental violence goals at this someday, he would probably feel some guilt for saying all that, but today was not that day. Daddy, what do you mean seduce? Becky asked holding her teddy bear, my little ones oh, it means to mislead someone. She pondered this with a serious face. When was mommy coming home? That's what really pissed him off, the need to tell his daughters what was going on. He should have thought hard about it, but he wasn't in the mood, as soon as she could, Becky. Becky walked back into the living room. Hank watched her plop down in front of the TV. No way in hell was he going to take the girls to Colorado to the hospital to see their mother wrapped in bandages like a mummy lest they have memories like that. Thirty minutes later, he had tickets for a week at Disneyland, a reservation at one of Mickey's hotels and plane tickets. They were leaving the next morning. Nicole would have to miss kindergarten for a bit but so be it, as soon as he got the tickets, the hospital called back, it turned out that Randy had had a heart attack and died. All efforts to save her were futile, Hank asked when it was right around the time he had yelled at her. Maybe he would suggest to Tina that she try yelling at Josh again. No. 
let her figure it out for herself. In the end, Hank had to send Randy's health insurance information to the hospital to get them to give him the death papers. He called the funeral home there and arranged for her cremation. With her burns, Hank thought he could get a discount, but they told him they were still going to charge him full price. He asked them to mail him the ashes after they got back from Disney. Once there, the girls were sad that their mom wasn't with them. But they were fortified with ample amounts of candy at Bibbidi, Bobby, Bobby Boutique. Josh held out until Thursday. Tina didn't yell at him anymore, so maybe that helped him hang on. After he died, Tina moved back to Colorado, living with friends because her house burned down. She acted like an honorable widow for the sake of her children, she told Hank. She didn't tell them about Randy. Tina's kids were older than Hank's, and they knew their father had been hurt in the fire, so all of this would have been harder to ignore. Hank's girls had no idea. For a while, he'd keep it up. Still, not saying anything bad about their mother to them wasn't easy. Shortly after they got back from Florida, the delivery guy came to the door with two items requiring signatures. The first was a letter from her in-laws. The second was a box containing Randy's ashes. The letter asked that Randy's remains be made available so they could arrange a memorial service and funeral in Randy's hometown in Florida. Unless Hank wanted to organize something where he lived. They must have called someone he realized. The letter lacked any apology for covering for Randy. That fact made the next decision easier. He hired one teenage girl in the neighborhood to babysit and left the girls telling the babysitter about the Disney trip, complete with a display of all their possessions and pictures on a clipboard. Hank then drove to a nearby national park. With a box of Randy's ashes packed and a bag slung over his shoulder, Hank went to one of the farther areas of the park. It had deep cinder block toilets instead of bathrooms. He took a picture of himself dumping ashes into the restroom, walking back to the car, he pondered whether maybe he should have done some therapy, but the thing was he wasn't angry anymore. Well, not angry enough to hit someone. Ruining a reputation was another matter entirely. He posted a video on social media of him dumping ashes in the restroom along with an explanation. He then wondered if the National Park Service was going to issue him some sort of fine for polluting the sinkhole. If so, he would gladly pay it. He'd never contacted her relatives, but he'd seen in the paper that they'd had some kind of memorial service in Jacksonville without him or his daughters. He told the girls that mom had an accident while she was away and she wasn't coming back. They took it as he expected them to. Fortunately, they had wonderful day care providers who helped and supported them. The life insurance payout was nice. Randy had more insurance than Hank thought. The insurance payout made it easier to rebuild his work life. He decided his daughters needed more fresh air, especially on the playgrounds where there were lots of kids, and pretty young mothers, many of whom were very sympathetic to his tragic story. He left out the part about Randy cheating he wanted to be sympathized with, not pitied. The girls began to be invited to a lot of play dates where the moms invited their cute single friends. Hank began to see a way forward. Hank never met Tina Turner, although they chatted on the phone from time to time.